As kids, we didn't have books like kids are now, and we didn't have toys. Like, so we had to create mm. our own fun. Mm. And uh, so if there were pencils or colored pencils, uh, there would be always a lot of that kind of activities going on. And this was in Italy? Yeah. Whereabouts in Italy? Where were you Veneto. Born? In the Veneto? Yeah. And it's, it's a difficult thing to think of art in Veneto because there are some mighty good works in churches and museums and things that you you can't believe that they were done by humans. So you get a, this you know, enormous inferiority complex. Back then you didn't have to buy a ticket to go and see those things. All you needed to do was to visit churches and buildings, old buildings. They were all there. As a kid? Yeah, you could just about kid? touch them with your hands. Yeah. Right? The, like the Annunciation by Titian, it was just there. And uh, certainly, uh, as a young ch child, uh, it made a huge impact on me. Uh, because you thought that you were um, seeing a snapshot or something. Um, they represented, you know, what the area, but it was something fascinating. You know, I mean, I like it seeing the horses and the donkeys and the photos and all sorts of little and um, again you know when I was in primary school <coughs> history was a good match for the sort of old stuff that was around and then you began to sort of find the context mm. before it was just beautiful pictures uh, we know you know, the only thing was because we, back then anyway, we had to go to church and we, so there were uh, mm -hmm. religious images and the only context was that they matched some, some, somewhat what he heard when he went to church. Mm -hmm. But then it were much more than that. Are you conscious of that history now when you're working or, as you said before, is it just... It's not... Uh, how can I put it? Is there... It's always there, but I don't dwell on it. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Mm, yeah. But it's always there. Just like uh, some of the aspects of being in the desert are also there. And then again, you know, I don't need to um, fake it or anything like that. It's just that experience is part of your life experience. And that's the well that you dip into when you're working, whether it's yeah. the desert and Fred Ward or... Yeah, it's, uh, but you don't do it self-consciously. It's more or less, it's like a, a river that goes around meanders and meanders and every now and then something comes along that you know, it might discover this. But it's not planned and calculated or mm. nothing like that. Mm. And even when when I paint or when I do other things. And uh, I never make a rational decision or a schedule. Sometimes I may go and paint late at night <laughs> and I don't know why. So when did you actually think that being an artist might be a possibility in your life? Can I confess it? Sure. Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> so I see more like a form of self-indulgence. First and foremost, it's the challenge mm. more than anything else. And the challenge that justifies it, maybe like somebody wants to go rock climbing. Or it's, it's like, uh, it's not easy for me to paint. Mm. And I change my mind a lot. And maybe that's what is alluring, that uh, you keep, keep on. I, I feel like I try to get there, but I never get there. Honestly, that's, mm. how, that's how I did. Mm. And then, if every now and then, like maybe like that painting that I said I just finished, it's been through so many different incarnations. <laughs> um, so, uh, when I'm there, is maybe I can't change it anymore. <laughs>
I buy the canvas, then I, I put the um, gesso or whatever, I prime it, then I put washes. So I postpone as much as possible, um, making any decisions as what is this painting about. And then by the time I do all of that, and maybe I do some, uh, it doesn't come out quite like what I had in mind, then that mistake is a clue of what. So, <laughs> so sometimes the mistakes are um, seeing something that you weren't thinking about and it can give you a lead to where you want to go. Because it can fall into being repetitive to the point of, so it's better to not to trust having a defined style and a defined kind of way of doing it. Or it can be work to take it to a certain point, but then you have to take the plunge. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and it doesn't come easy. You know. But sometimes the good stuff happens not because you have never had this great inspiration. Whenever I had a great inspiration, it was my worst failure. It was more or less trial and error, and you have lots of falls. Yeah. But slowly, slowly, you begin to see that you are uh, up to something, and, and then eventually, if you're lucky, <laughs> it reveals itself. You, know, like it, you, you find what you are after, after a lot of struggle every time. And, um, if something is easy and for five minutes I think, oh, that was good, I got the painting done, we well, have no much trouble, um, then it isn't it. It isn't anything. Or in some cases, you know, like, as I said, that painting that you really like, that's been going through, going through different incarnations. Sometimes, you know, I go in there and I think, oh no, still the same thing. And then all of a sudden, um, I start doing something to it and then, it takes a, a totally new, um, and it, it, it works only if it doesn't look reworked. Some paintings that look reworked are failures. They, they, it has to become an, almost like a new painting, you know, even though, the, the, you know what I mean? Yes, so that yeah. the texture has to play an active role rather yeah. than being uh, pentimenti and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be part, part of it. So it's 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 more like a life process, a living process, yeah. so that the, and it's history. The reality of uh, life and it's so co very complex and layers and layers and layers and layers and mm. change and in a sense is that's what it is all about. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's just a matter of despite all the trying to in the end uh, strike the right note. So sort of, to sometimes I can put it this way: I go in the studio and I see a total disaster. And again, then the total disaster can become something quite nice. Mm. And, uh, and maybe that's like a parallel with life. If we never ch take any challenges, we are nowhere. If we get ta take challenges, uh, we, we can stuff up, or, but we can learn from that as well. It's, it's not easy, <laughs> right? And um, you know, after. Curting, uh, uh, I had a, a time when I went to the United States and I went to school there and I saw all the, you know, the big shows there. And, but again, I realized it's all relative. You know, there they, they, they were some paintings that were great, but no difference than when I uh, first saw maybe the first chapters in Italy. It's different periods of history, different concerns, but uh, it's just. Uh, part of being human, to try to express yourself through, you know, some people write, some people paint, some people play music, but it's one, something that is a human characteristic that uh, we are different from all the others living species. That we have this sort of drive to come up with something creative all the time, and if we don't, then it doesn't feel right. <laughs> A human characteristic that uh, we are different from all the others living species. That we have this sort of drive to come up with something creative all the time, and if we don't, then it doesn't feel right. <laughs>